Now with both of these amplifiers being so small, this would probably fit behind the radio like we were talking about. This is a little bigger, but it's still pretty small. In an F-150 though, there's tons of room right here, which is where we're gonna mount these somewhere like this here and here. We are going to also be using some power distribution because we have a four gauge that we're running and we need to split it off to the eight gauge and the 10 gauge for this amplifier. When figuring out placement of your amplifier, something to keep in mind is the controls. You wanna be able to get to them. They're important and they're extra important on these amplifiers. This end of this amplifier, all we have is power protect and the main power plug. We're not gonna to need to see this end for anything. And on this amplifier, it's designed the same way. We definitely need these two ends easily accessible. If we mount the amplifiers with those towards the top, like this, that'll definitely make our job the easiest. We could also go sideways with them here and we can see the controls on this end as well. But what to think about is where's the signal? How is that going to route? Do I need to keep it away from my power? In my mind, when I'm placing amplifiers, I'm always thinking about which way the wires are gonna route. The signals are here on this side, which is the total opposite of the power. If I mount them face up like this, I can bring all the signal this way down and over to the passenger side of the car, which is where we typically run them in a F-150. Power will come out of the bottom of the amplifiers and go towards the driver's side. There again, typically how we run them in an F-150. And that'll keep everything segregated away from itself so that none of them are in the same area. I think this is definitely the way to go. I'm going to leave a gap between the amplifiers so they have plenty of room to breathe. And also I'm going to put them on small risers to get the backs off of the plastic. For this, we're gonna be using a quarter inch piece of plastic is gonna be the thickness. I just haven't decided yet whether I wanna go ABS or the blown PVC Sentra. This isn't gonna be a big amp rack, so Sentra would be the one to choose on this because it is very small. I don't have, I'm not going way over here onto this side to do it. For screwing it in place, two options are available to me. If I remove this little piece of carpet right here, I can drill a hole and put a nut cert there. This does not go out to the outside of the car and screw it in, or I can pull this 10 millimeter bolt here and use this to hold my amp rack in place. When we do big long amp racks, we like to go into this area here because I wanna have a big flat area to reduce the amount of twist that my amp rack will have because it's gonna be going way off to the side. And in this installation with it being a small, these aren't very heavy. I don't need a big footprint here. That's not to say I can't make something that has a U-shaped cut here that brings it in, which I might do. I need to take some measurements and figure out how big of a piece of plastic I need. The basic shape we're going for is this area here is what's gonna screw in, and then just a basic rectangle. Our height, go into this bolt, used to be 18 inches tall. I don't like going all the way over to this edge. There is a nipple right here. This is where I like to stop my amp rack. That way I have room for my wire to go in. Sometimes we'll cut this carpet to let the wire go into place. And if I marriage it right up with this, then I have to notch my plastic. I don't need this extra inch. I have plenty of room here. So we'll come across 14 and a half. And that is our overall dimensions. Now what we're gonna do with that, cut out for the right height for this. Coming from the floor up, we're at 13 and five eighths. What I'm doing is I'm coming from this area here, measuring where my first cut needs to be. I'm gonna remove this corner. My second cut, my, my U as it was, needs to be at three and three quarters, as well as four and a quarter. I'll remove that area here, and then I'm gonna bring that back up and there'll be a square in this area, and that's gonna stop at seven and a half. It's wonderful to talk about all these cool shapes and whatnot, and be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Let's just cut it out and I'll show you.
And this is what we end up with. So this is what I was talking about, this groove here. Now to know where we're gonna drill this hole for this bolt, all you have to do is press really hard onto this material. It'll leave a mark here on the back so we know where to drill. We ended up going with the blown PVC Sintra. We always round off our edges on this and someone asked recently how we do that. We use this little guy right here. This is a small round over bit from Mobile Solutions and is connected to a Bosch micro router. And it sits of course in front of our vacuum so when we're done we can just brush it all into the trash. As you've guessed, next is to get this over to the bench, get the amps mounted in place, get all our dials and switches and everything turned on and set, get the wiring done to get it into the car. Back on the bench, let's get these amplifiers preset to go into the car. By preset I mean get them to a safe setting. We'll adjust them once they're in the car. When we first power it up, we don't want them to be like gain turned all the way up, crossover off, all those fun things. So just go through it real quick, gain off, boost off, set your crossover, set your subsonic filter, and then you have two switches here, high level input, you wanna make sure it's set for high level. DC offset we can leave off because we'll use this, the 204 to switch that. Auto turn on, first switch is going to be set to DC, fader set to off, compression, we're gonna leave that off, buy amp mode, is going to be on kicker eq engaged time delay engaged then we have a six and a half we're gonna go for 80 hertz that is these first two switches these two switches both need to be in the down position our gain is zero on both sides and that is pretty much it for the preliminary setup get our amplifier spacing the way we want it the signal is going to come down this side like we said then we have some distribution that we need to deal with. Because we are going to be running one power wire, we need to add in some fusing back here. According to the manufacturer, this takes a 20, this takes a 60, that's 80 amps. The problem that we have is we typically only stock the mini fuses like this, and the smallest I can get this is a 30. So that's kind of a bummer. Maxi fuses will go down to a 20, but I don't stock any maxi fuse holders. I haven't stocked those since like, I don't know, the early 2000s. What we have is two power distribution blocks. And these are the Stinger SHD20s. They'll do zero and four inputs and four and eight outputs. Plan is to put these two guys like this here and I can run our power and ground into them. Next, this small fuse holder for this amp's power and then the fuse holder that comes with the amplifier, I'm going to mount that here as well and that'll be my fuse distribution. It's not the prettiest way to do it. However, we're not worried about pretty. I mean, we are, but performance has always gotta be the first thing you think of. And in this case, proper fusing, the right size fuse is way more important than whether it's aesthetically pleasing, you know, because it's two different style fuse holders. It's really not that important. We'll still make it look the best that we can. Let's get started screwing this stuff down and getting it all taken care of. In case you were wondering what base knob you need in order to control this guy, it is the Kicker CX ARC. When you're building your amp rack, there's a couple different layers of accomplishment that you go over, at least in my mind, and how I work this. You have your input, your output, and your power. And those three things have to be done in a specific order, depending on how this is all gonna pan out. In this case, in this corner of the amplifier is the signal, which is gonna be divided over onto this side. Getting these in place so that you know which way you're gonna route them away from the power, like step one. Step two, because in this, we're gonna be running speaker wires along with this, meaning they're all gonna go to the same direction, as opposed to, let's say, some are gonna go this way, some are gonna go that way, is figuring out 
about, okay, where does that next piece need to happen? So this would be like one, this would be two. We've made our bend here, this is here, and now we're going to attach these to some speed wire, which is a nine conductor wire that has the same colors as these in them to go off to the front of the car. But separating this out so that you have some level of accomplishment as you go does help, as opposed to just like going at it like a, you know, it's like I'm gonna do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. No, finish one aspect of it and then move on to the next. So we're gonna get these done and then we'll move on to the power side or we'll start with the power and get the power done and then we'll move on to the, to the wiring side. The reason why you wanna do that is so you don't forget anything. Nothing's worse than getting something all done and you jumped around and then you're like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot about the remote turn on or the base knob or something like that. We're two thirds of the way through with the amp rack. We have the signal done now. We have the speaker wire connected. Let's take a look at some of the things that are going on here. We have two pieces of speed wire. And when we run two pieces of speed wire like this, it's much easier to put them in braided sleeving. And the F-150, where this mounts on the driver's side, it has to pass all the way across to the passenger side. And there are spots where you can see it. That means I like to cover it in the braided sleeving through that area in down into the floorboard. This got covered pretty much up into where it's gonna come into the dash. With Speedwire, it is insulated enough. It's a double layer of insulation. So this is just purely for aesthetics. It has nothing to do with form and function like you would on a power wire. There's a remote wire here. And we talked about this having DC offset and it, it doing what it needs to do. The reason why we've attached one of the remote turn on wires to come out, DC offset is a great feature and works most of the time. Time. Because it works most of the time and not all the time, there might be a situation where you need a remote turn on wire to make this thing work. The speed wire has nine conductors in it. One of them is a remote turn on. That's why there's nine. It's the ninth wire. It doesn't take any extra time to connect that wire up so that if you do run into a situation where it's like, oh my gosh, I need a remote turn on. It's glitching. It's doing something strange. It's there already behind the radio and whatever you're going to do to get your accessory wire to turn these on, you don't have to tear all this back apart and run a wire in. So it's kind of a no-brainer, but you'd be surprised how many people don't do it. For this though, we're going to run, this remote turn on wire is gonna loop over and come into this amplifier. And then this remote turn on wire is also gonna connect in at this amplifier. So it's gonna do this and that will allow us, if we need to power this back up, we can turn off the DC offset on this and then it will feed both amplifiers. And with that, we can start now on the power side of things. I'm going to start with getting the sub amp wired in first just because I want to see how that is going to lay out and then we'll come back and move over to this because this already has wire on it and we have that fuse holder that we have to mount somewhere into this so I'm not as excited about working on that yet I want to kind of think about that more and get the softball or the easy part of the wiring done when running the power wire we have two distribution blocks what we want to keep track of is where power and ground is on our bigger here here it doesn't matter these things can twist over each other they're not super big wire the ground is on the outside, the power is on the inside. If we come out of the power, go into the fuse box, we don't want to go to this far one because then the ground is going to have to go underneath it. It's simpler to just take the quick U and use this as our power. And then we'll run the ground out to the outside and connect to this. With this style connector, which is a set screw that drives into the wire, we will be using a thing called a wire ferrule. That is this guy here. It's a sleeve that goes over the wire, like this this, depending on the size of the wire, we can use a ferrule crimping tool that will make it attach on there. And when we put the wire into the hole, this is gonna keep it together. When you're using this threaded nut and it goes in there and it's just raw wire, it'll twist around and rip and tear. With the ferrule, it keeps it like a lug, nice and tight inside of there. Keeps all those little tiny wires where they need to go.
500's power wire is ran. This is what I was wanting to do to figure out where all this has to go. Next, we're going to bring in these wires here. Now this fuse holder, the way this sits, it's got like a quarter of an inch that it's gonna raise up above everything. I'm thinking I'm just gonna put a quarter inch strip here to raise everything up to this level. And that'll also give me a riser over this ground to get into here. And then I'm gonna put a riser here so that this sits above the speaker wire. Before we start on this and building that, I want to get the sub wire out because that's gonna come down in here, this area. And I wanna make sure that the piece I build sits, that the sub wire sits below that. For the sub, we have two 10 inch that are gonna get powered off of this. That means we're going to run a two pieces of 16 gauge to this amplifier so that it'll Y off and go to each speaker cup. So I made up our two runs of 16 gauge sub wire here. And as you'll notice, they go into one ferrule on each. So these are the grounds, these are the positives. We use a double ferrule. It has an input for two wires and then we'll compress down into one. That allows us to run the two 16 gauge into it. We get all our ferrules from Ferrules Direct. You do have to buy a quantity. You can get things like this that you don't normally find anywhere else. It's all covered in braided loom. As it gets down here about halfway, it splits off into the two runs, one to go left, one to go right. If you're gonna be putting any type of labeled heat shrink like we did here onto it, make sure that you look to see what is positive and what is negative so that you get this right. It's unlike a power wire where it's just one wire and you can just spin it, you can't spin these. The one thing I will say about doing this is, or any form of, of work, you create quite a pile of tools because it's just like you want to keep them out of your, like when I used to build and fabricate, it was always just a pile of like your nail gun, your your heat gun, all your tools with just your rulers, your pencils, and they just all pile up and you, by the time you're done, you have these tools like around you, like a, an explosion of what you've been working on. In this case, we're done with the amp rack. We've put in our power and ground here across the bottom. We have our speaker wire coming out here. Sub wire is gonna go. The last step of this is to get our power and ground wire ran into these. Fernando's working on getting that through the car now, so we're just gonna take this into the car and we'll marriage it all up once we get in there. Mm -hmm. 